This video will cover the topic, solving for a variable inside parentheses in terms of other variables. What would that even look like? That's a good question. It would look something like this. Here, we're being asked to solve for x in the equation z is equal to 3 times x minus 7. Oh wow, that looks weird with more than one variable. Are you sure we should mess around with that? I know it looks a little different from what we're used to seeing, but that doesn't mean we can't still solve for x. Okay then, where do we start? The first thing we have to do here is move 3 over from the right side to the left side. I know how to do that. We can divide both sides by 3, right? That's right. When we do this, we're now left with z over 3 is equal to x minus 7. Now, since there's no reason for the parentheses, we can get rid of those. Oh, I see. Now we can add 7 to both sides. When we do this, we get z over 3 plus 7 is equal to x, which is our final answer. Let's do one more example. In this example, we're being asked to solve for b in the equation b minus a all times m is equal to r. How do you think we should approach this problem? Wow, this problem has a lot of variables. That's okay, just approach it piece by piece. Okay, to start off, we should move m over from the left side to the right side by dividing both sides by m. Now, since the left side just has the expression in the parentheses, we can erase those. And now we can add a to both sides, which means our final answer will be b equals r divided by m plus a. That was awesome! Great work! Okay, let me just make sure I have this right. So in order to get whatever variable we are solving for by itself, we first need to move everything that is outside the parentheses over to the other side of the equal sign. Once this is done, we can then get rid of the parentheses and move whatever was inside of them over to the other side as well, until we are left with just the variable that we are attempting to solve for. That's right. It looks like you've got it down.